very, very tight. <laughs> Hi there. This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform, where if you need a website, they make it super easy. You literally need zero skills, and you can have a website up and running probably before you're even done watching this here video. And I actually made a website on Squarespace about getting rid of all this gear where I'm going to sell it because they also offer the means to make an online shop. You can host podcasts, they have great customer service, their templates are, like they're, it's not like they actually, it's not a line, they actually look good. You can save you 10% off your first purchase if you go to squarespace.com slash McKinnon. Thanks Squarespace for sponsoring this video and I hope you guys enjoy this conversation with, with Matt Diavella because he's gonna help me fix this problem. Bye, I'm just gonna, okay. Ow. Okay folks, welcome back to part four, but it's a separated part four because today we're not actually getting rid of anything physically or moving things around the studio. Today we are talking with the one and only Matt Diavella. I wanna talk about minimalism as a lifestyle, how letting go of stuff changed my life and how it might help yours. But don't worry, it doesn't really look like this. Dude's an incredible YouTuber. He's the director of several documentaries on Netflix about minimalism, one that just released January 1st. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. So I've compiled 10 questions for Matt. Okay, Matt, number one, thanks so much for being here. Pete, thank you so much for having me. Really excited to chat about this topic. As you know, it's something that I'm really passionate about. My first question to you is, as I recall, you used to have a ton of production equipment. I think you had a red, you shot with some pretty heavy, hard hitting gear. What was it that initially made you start thinking that, I feel like I might wanna get rid of this stuff? I've actually been practicing minimalism for the past 10 years. I got that gear when I was a freelance filmmaker working directly with clients. As I transitioned to making YouTube videos full time, I decided to sell a lot, a lot of that gear because it was simply slowing me down. Also because uh, I was running out of money. <laughs> I had started my YouTube channel uh, and I, I went full time with it before I had any money. Let me sell this thing, get that money, and then I could keep doing this for maybe a couple more months. When you started, I'm assuming there was a time where you began getting rid of things and you were like, you know what? I don't need this, I don't want this. I'm wondering what was the reaction like from your family and from your friends? Did your audience or does or has your audience ever reacted? Because recently I've noticed that a lot of the people that watch my channel are wondering if I'm going through something or if I'm okay. I will say that you are very lucky that you're getting into minimalism today because it's definitely much more accepted. I think back in 2010, people had no idea what it was. They thought I was gonna go and become a monk. Some people thought I was going into witness protection. They were, they were really asking serious questions like, Matt, is everything okay? I really didn't run around telling people I was doing it. I think people just noticed. One more thing, when you actually tell the world that you are a minimalist, it's actually really helpful because then one, you're getting out in front of it, especially during the holidays and gift giving seasons. People know that you're a minimalist and they understand your values. You might have to explain it to some people if, they, if they've never heard the word before, but it's really easy also to turn things down. And so if somebody wants to give me something for free and I don't want it, you can feel really guilty about that. And so what I do usually is I say, oh no, I'm sorry, I'm gonna be a good minimalist and I'm gonna have to turn you down on this one. It takes a little bit of the tension out of turning people down, uh, and it has made my life a lot easier. How do you get rid of all this stuff tactically? And then after you've made your list of things, are there ever, or was there ever some items that you'd go back on and be like, ah, but like I might, I just can't. I can't do it. I can't get rid of it. What do you, what do, you do? Help. I feel like I might just be a hoarder. <laughs> Pete, I didn't want to say it, but yes, you might be a hoarder. I would actually recommend that you separate them into four categories, things that you're gonna keep, things that you're gonna sell, things that you're gonna donate, and then finally things that you're gonna throw out. Of course, we wanna reduce that last pile as much as possible so things just don't end up in a landfill. So one piece of advice that I'd give is to start small. I think it's very easy to get excited and say, oh my God, I'm gonna go through the entire studio or my entire home over the weekend. And it's probably gonna take a lot more time than that. You have to go through closet by closet, room by room, that momentum will build and you'll actually realize that decluttering, practicing minimalism can actually be kind of fun. So one idea that I do have for filmmakers 
is to create a capsule kit. Figure out how much gear you want. Let's say you get one Pelican case worth of gear. You fill it up, that's all you can use for the next three months. You give a friend a key to your cage or the rest of your gear, your closet, whatever, wherever your gear is, you lock it away and you make sure that you can't use it for the next three months. And this will just be a little experiment to see how you can get by if there are things that you thought you needed but you actually don't and it's actually slowing you down. Okay, I noticed when you moved to Australia that you made that last video where you were cleaning out your house and I was like, oh, this is great. I love this. I just can't wait to watch him get rid of everything. There was one part in that video where you, I think you condensed like all of your hard drives down to OneDrive. How did you do that? You took minimalism a step further and you digitally minimized. And when I started YouTube, after I was done a trip and I would like upload the video to YouTube, I'd delete everything, all of it, just bam, gone, empty bin, don't care. I'm not buying hard drives over and over for my entire life no thanks and then Maddie you know Maddie was like um you should keep everything and I was like I should and he's like yeah okay and I started keeping everything and it's come in handy because I can go back and, and cite certain things from 2017 and pull those drone shots but do I need to so this is one of those projects that I had been procrastinating myself for years I started freelance filmmaking about a decade ago around the similar time that I started practicing minimalism. And I have accumulated so much footage and so many hard drives from client projects. And with my move to Australia, I realized this is the time. I'm gonna go through my dozens. There was actually 50 or 60 hard drives. A lot of these hard drives were one terabyte, two terabyte drives. And so it was really easy to take five to 10 hard drives and put them down onto a single G drive that's this big. This G drive is 20 terabytes. I did go through and delete a lot of old footage that I don't need anymore. Weddings and bar mitzvah videos that I shot a decade ago. I did keep the final project file, but I didn't keep all the other footage that was on the drive. And that helped me consolidate it even more. Do you feel like, do you feel like a better content creator or a better filmmaker? Now that you have less equipment, you've gotten rid of everything and you're down to just the essentials that you know you need that you can make great films with? No, I would say I don't think that I'm a better filmmaker now that I have less gear, but I do think that I'm a faster filmmaker. My primary camera for making YouTube videos for the past year had been my C500. And then when I came here to Australia, I was like, I'm not gonna bring this big camera. I'm not gonna bring all my camera gear. I'm gonna go with the Canon R5. Using this small DSLR camera for the first time in years, made me realize how much quicker I could move, how quickly and easy it is to set up multiple shots back to back to create these quick coffee montages. <laughs> Pete, I also have a fascination and a love for creating coffee montages, although I'm not at your level yet. The less gear you have, the quicker you can move, and that's often a really good thing. If you could go back across all the things that you pieced, gone and you could get one piece of gear back, what would it be? It would be my, the first camera that I ever had, my Sony Handycam, really just for nostalgia purposes. I mean, you can go out and buy any new piece of gear if you have the money, but to get that first Sony Handycam, like that to me is a symbol. It's a symbol of how I started, how much things have changed over time and how much people get caught up on gear. Also all those tapes, like all the footage that I had that I got rid of from my high school days as a little aspiring filmmaker. I think it would be really cool to see all that stuff. How would you recommend people go about not regressing? back into you know hoarding stuff again and accumulating more and more after they've done all this work of purging all this stuff that they don't feel they need, and myself included, from going back to the old ways. I think that's one of the more common myths when it comes to minimalism is that when you declutter, you do it once and then you're done. But the truth is that our lives change so much over time. There are new people in our lives. We have kids, we have families, they grow. And so the amount of stuff that we need over time will change. I think that the important thing is that right now, as you're going through this process, it's to identify the reason why you're doing it and really getting clear on how it makes you feel and the excitement that you have. And so I think if you get really clear on that and you understand the purpose behind what you're doing, it's gonna make it easier every time you have to go back and take a look at all the things that you've accumulated. Has all of this made you happier? 
Like, are you a happier person now that you've done this and you live this way and these things are gone? I would say that I am definitely a happier person now that I am a minimalist. It does not solve all of your problems. It's not a magic bullet. And I think that's one thing that people really need to understand. I'm really open on my channel about the anxiety that I go through and a lot of the struggles that I go through personally, especially when it comes to mental health. No, minimalism won't solve all your problems, but it does allow you to live a life that's free of distraction. And so I think if you were to go back in time, say you had a time machine, you went back to 2010 and you slapped minimalism out of my hand, I tell you that one, that's a really bad use of a time machine. But two, I would say that it would have led me down a path that wouldn't have been fulfilling for me because I wouldn't have asked those really deep questions about what I wanted out of life. Minimalism, it's great. Favorite Dwayne Johnson movie? Hit me. I mean, I love them all. <laughs> he's, he's the greatest. My favorite part about this question is probably nobody's gonna know why you brought up The Rock, but I love it, I'm here for it. I would say my favorite movie from Dwayne The Rock Johnson would be Jumanji. It was so unexpectedly good. I thought a remake, come on, Robin Williams, you're not gonna be able to top that. Like that was just one of the greatest movies of my childhood but somehow they did it in their own distinct way that was really, really funny. And I think it really showed The Rock's strengths. And I could go down a whole media critic review of this movie and how amazing it is, but I'm gonna spare you. I will say that's my favorite movie because it's so good. My favorite movie from The Rock because it's so bad is definitely Southland Tales. Southland Tales is, <laughs> you have to see it. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Okay, last question. Since this whole thing has been about things and stuff and getting rid of stuff, what are three things that you can't live without? And it doesn't have to be just filmmaking stuff. Literally, it could be anything. Like, I don't care. Just give me, like, if it's milk. I don't know why my mind went straight to milk. That's so stupid. Okay, so three things that I can't live without. I would say my Lamborghini. The seats are just so comfortable. I don't have a Lamborghini. That's not true. Number one, noise canceling headphones. They're great because I have a one bedroom apartment, share it with my wife, and it's really difficult to get quiet time to work by myself. But once I pop those headphones on, locked in. So Nat knows when I've got my headphones on, I'm working, I'm focused, I'm doing my thing. The other thing I would say is a good book. Uh, that's a bit of a corny answer, but it really is one of those things that it, it helps to fuel me and inspire me for my work. And it also helps me to have a nice distraction at the end of the day to, to read some fiction. And it's a habit that I've really been building and rebuilding this past year. So the last thing that I couldn't live without would be my Manfrotto boom stand pole. Uh, and it's just because I use it for so many different shots. I use it for doing overhead shots with my camera. I also use it to mount lights. I also use it uh, as my audio source. So that's what I'm using right now. And I love it because it compacts down really, really small. And then you just close that down, and that, that. And then it goes inside. It goes inside of it. Boom stand pull for the win. It's the Manfrotto 420B. This is not sponsored by Manfrotto, but this is just a great stand. Okay, Matt, thanks so much for taking the time to answer all of this. Thank you so much for having me, dude. As you know, you're a massive inspiration to me. And also good luck with the rest of your minimalism journey. I'm excited to see where this thing goes. I will continue the purge and uh, I'll move on to episode five of getting rid of everything. I'm inspired by someone like you who's made so many good videos, so much great content on this subject. And if anyone has any further questions or interest with regards to uh, minimalist lifestyle, uh, healthy habits, new habits, old habits, Matt's channel is absolutely imperative to subscribe to. One of my all time favorite YouTubers that literally I feel guilty for watching every time he posts a video because I feel like I should pay for it. I should just PayPal you some money right now. Just thanks. Guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Matt, thanks again, man. Really appreciate it. I will see you guys in the next episode of The Purge when I'm getting rid of all my furniture. I don't know. I should just invite some of you guys to the studio and you can just walk around and point at things and offer me prices. I don't, or just take it, I don't know, whatever. That could go bad real fast. Let's just forget I know, that's goodbye. Stop, that's the... Uh.